I'm Isla Traquair, and I'm a journalist on the hunt for the best buys for your body. Coming up, back boobs on the rise and front bumps on parade. Boobs out. We uncover troublesome tootsies. Sickening demon meets its match. Head spins around. Plus, we get wasted. OK. I guess you wish that. Biologic, our prescription for better you. Nearly 70% of us spend most of the day sedentary. And unfortunately, all that time spent in our rump has led to an increase in muscular skeletal disorders. And that's a real pain in the neck. My back started hurting about a month ago. It's on the right side, basically right by my shoulder blade, and it just feels like it's pulling tighter and tighter. It's difficult even just loading my arms and carrying her around. I'm hunched over. Essentially, I'm in that constant position all day long. Noelle and I are heading to chiropractor Raminder Badjil. He specializes in the treatment of musculoskeletal injuries. All the way to the right. <laughs> Can you feel that? Mm -hmm. A little bit tender mm -hmm. there. First up, assessing Noelle's range of motion. Less flexibility means more stiffness and pain. Always a willing assistant, I'm helping gauge how far off the mark Noelle's movement is from normal. It's like synchronized swimmers. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can see the difference between you and Noelle right off the back. Maybe I've got more chins than you. <laughs> Lila, your textbook, uh, normal. Good Thanks. for you. And it's Noelle, like, we uh, have a little bit of work to do to get you normal. We do. The lumbar spine is made up of five vertebrae in the lower back. Poor posture can cause hyperlordosis, a severe inward curve of the lumbar, which can constrict nerves, limit movement, and cause pain. Uh, one thing you'll notice about Noelle right off the bat is that she is hunched forward. Her neck is actually hunched forward as well, and she has a little bit of a curvature here that is abnormal. If she doesn't intervene and if we don't take the necessary steps to, to reverse that process, the deformity may increase, meaning that she might develop a bit of a hump in her mid-back. The 12 vertebrae of the middle back, the thoracic spine, has a natural bend, the kyphotic curve. Consistently slouching can cause a postural kyphosis, a physical deformity like a hunchback that can cause pain in the neck, back and extremities. To reduce strain and stop Noelle's developing kyphosis, a simple but slightly saucy step must be taken. Straighten out for me, stick your chest out just a little bit. Now there's no stress on her upper back. Boobs out! <laughs> Here, from the undergrowth, I'm monitoring the species known as the office worker. To help Noelle sit up and stand tall, I need to know whether her workspace works for her back. Hello. Hi. Look at your chair. <laughs> you have no arms on it. And no lumbar support, which is needed to keep her head and shoulders sitting back. Look at this. It's made of cardboard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think I need to get you a chair. So I'm going to do some of the work, but you have to okay. do the rest of it. And remember what it is? Boops out. While Noelle is sitting pretty, I'm testing four top-of-the-line ergonomically designed chairs that promise to be best for backs. The global rolls in with the lowest price, but of course, top-of-the-line is never cheap. It comes in three different sizes, so depending on the size of your derriere, you get the correct seat. I hope this is a small one. The human scale offers a flexible mesh backrest. It feels so nice. It's moulding to my body. The ergocentric provides a pump for expanding lumbar support. Maybe if I do... Oops. Oh. And the Cinetec has an antibacterial covering and is reinforced by steel. The more adjustments a chair has, the more it can be customised to your body's needs. So to find the best fit for Noelle, I'm totalling each chair's adjustment tally. 13. This one has four. Ten. Ta da! One. This bad boy has 11. Of course, you'll need to know how to fiddle with those knobs and levers to personalize your settings. Oh. <laughs> Adjust the chair height so your thighs are no less than 90 degrees to your torso. Set armrests so your elbows are roughly level with the keyboard. Proper lumbar support maintains that important lower back curve which keeps you from slouching forward. I'm dropping this plumb line over the chairs to accentuate how much each provides. If you're fuller figured, you'll want a chair that offers even more lumbar support so it can reach and uphold that healthy curve. 
A seat front that is rounded from top to bottom will reduce the pressure under your thighs. But don't just check out the seat. For the best stability, look for a five-star base. It might look like you're slacking, but it's important that your chair can recline. Tipping back will immediately reduce stress on your spinal discs and stimulate blood flow. Of these chairs, only the human scale has a seat that instantly slides forward and stays level as you recline, meaning no pressure under your thighs when you kick back. I've narrowed the choice to just two. The Ergocentric because it has the best lumbar support and recline range along with 11 adjustments. And the Human Scale because although it has just four adjustments, this chair adapts automatically when you sit in it. Our chiropractor insists Noelle makes the final evaluation to determine the best fit for her body. This one is all about simplicity, the mesh moulds to your back. Next we have the all singing, all dancing. Ear centric. Tell me when. I'm pumped. <laughs> to deflate you. Which of these two has the back factor? I have to go with this one. Okay. I like the higher back and my yeah. longer length of body. And you like to pretend you're a racing driver. I feel better throughout my day at work. Every day it feels a bit better. Coming up, who can't take a good poke? And look out, Dr. Dave gets physical. Just slap me if I get anything wrong here. <laughs>glance, you may think that we come in all shapes and sizes, but researchers believe women's bodies fall into just two categories. In this pop-up clinic, we'll find out what it means if you're an apple or a pear. Ladies here, I've ambushed you in the fruit section, because I want to ask you if you know which fruit shape you are, an apple or a pear? Pear. Apple. A pair, I guess. Well, there's a way we can find out. Have you ever heard of BMI before? Well, it's kind of passe now, sort of like Isla's boots here. What we're using a lot of is waist-hip ratio, where we measure the difference between your waist and hip. And that tells us if, in fact, you're a category apple or pear. Because those tasty extra calories end up on our hips or waist. And so I'm actually going to measure you and determine which one you are with this little measuring band here. I'm going to reach around your waist here, and we're going to bring this about an inch above your navel. And then you divide that by the pointy parts of your hips that step out. You're an apple. You're an right. Apple. apple sounds healthy, but it isn't. Because an apple carries fat around their waist, and it also means fat around their heart and fat around their liver, because you're at twice the risk of having a heart attack or stroke and high blood pressure than a pear. And those threats increase with waists bigger than 35 inches. Hello, my name is Isla. Being a pear is a, actually a safer type of fat for you, less risk of heart attack and high blood pressure than an apple. Don't be too smug, pears, because although less common, we can also have dangerous fat around our organs. Having the fat around your hips, I call it tragically hip, because it's harder fat for you to lose. I also know that we're more prone to cellulite, varicose veins. But the good news is, these are just indicators, not guarantees. There are foods that can actually help you, so I want to test you. Here I have kale, avocado, bran. Dave has some skin milk, olive oil and chicken. Which do you think is best for your shape? That one. I would think that one too. This is better for the apple because it is a fiber rich plate here. That's right, it doesn't give you that quick sugar in your system. Now it's for the pear, it's basically just keeping your fat low. A minute on the lips, an inch on the hips. Lifetime on your hips. I beg your pardon? Uh, nothing. Hello. Today I'm doing something I've never done before, and I'm going to be honest, I don't know much about it. It's um, traditional Chinese medicine. I've never been told not to brush my tongue before, which is a bit weird, but I want to see it warts and all. I don't have any warts on my tongue, just an expression. At least I don't think I do. I'm a bit nervous about this because it's kind of out of my comfort zone, but uh, I'm up for it. Bring it on. Traditional Chinese medicine views health as a process of maintaining balance and harmony. Wow, this is not what I thought. Dr. Melissa Carr has practiced TCM for more than 10 years. 
Well, let's take a look at your tongue. What are you looking for? I'm looking at the color, the shape, and the size of your tongue, and the coating. A lot of that tells us what's going on inside the body. Our body is mapped many times over, so the tongue is just one of the places we can do a diagnosis. So I have a book here. That looks like a slab of raw beef, doesn't it? It does. I would not be showing you my tongue if I had one <laughs> like that, too. No, I don't have a tongue. <laughs> So the coating is why I asked you to not brush your tongue. There should be a thin white coat on the tongue. You don't have very much coating. Mm. So it means that your stomach energy is not digesting things well and not reflecting the energy. Hmm, that's fitting. I struggle with stomach problems. We're going to take your pulse. She's checking its character, whether it's slippery, soggy, slow, plus what it reveals about my vital organs. Here we have the lungs, your spleen, and your kidneys. And what's my pulse telling you? Your kidney yang energy is showing some weakness, and that paired with it being a little slow shows that you have a little bit of cold. I'm always cold, and particularly my hands and feet. OK, that hmm. shows up there on your pulse. Wow, this is fascinating. So based off of what we've done today, I feel that acupuncture would be a suitable treatment for you. So sharp, pointy things will be stuck in my body to release blocked energy and boost my immunity. Are the needles big? They are very, very thin. You can fit about 10 inside of an average hypodermic needle, an injection okay. needle. So what we're doing is we're working with qi or energy. This one is a large intestine point, and the idea is to help your digestive system. So you might feel a little mosquito bite. And out. Not so bad, right? You've done it. It felt like you just flicked me with your I finger. I did. I just got Have a I little... Got any... I've got any... <laughs> One wee needle won't fix chronic digestive problems. For that, you'll need about five sessions. I feel a, a warmth. Yeah. I'll ask you to take a nice deep breath. Oh. This one is a common one to do for relaxing the mind. I need if you want to close your eyes. Okay. It's right. over really quick. Deep breath oh. in. And out. Was that so bad? I can't open my... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm scared. It's done. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. It just feels nice and pleasant in a warm, calming way. That's bizarre. Still to come, back bumps gone wild. This is such a strange sensation. Later, the truth comes out. Puke on my head. <laughs> what was that bad? having my first taste of traditional Chinese medicine. Since it's been practiced for thousands of years, I figured it's about time. So far, I've been pressed and pierced. Look, it's a needle dance. <laughs> now the cups are coming in. They're used for everything, from blood disorders and asthma to migraines. But my treatment is for stress. Well, for you today, the main benefit of cupping is going to be to help to relax some of your tight muscles in yeah. your upper back and shoulder. So it's almost like a reverse massage. Whoa. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Once they're there, it'll start to increase the amount of suction that you get. You actually start mm -hmm. to feel more of the tissue go up yeah. into the cup and more of the stretching of the tight muscles. How does it feel when I move that? Oh, I love that. This is such a strange sensation. I like this. So taking them off, all I have to do is introduce a little air yeah. into it. Am I going to have giant love bites on my back? <laughs> you may look like you were attacked by an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's pretty massive, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Well, they're bigger cups than my cup sizes in the front, that's for sure. <laughs> So that was my first taste of traditional Chinese medicine, but it was anything but traditional for me. The cupping was just, you know, bizarre. And thankfully, these bruises will fade in about a week. It kind of felt like a massage, but more intense, and I still feel this wonderful warmth in my muscles, and I will definitely be trying out uh, traditional Chinese medicine again. I'm catching up with shopping experts Anne and Christina for a really sick tip. 
Here's a product you've got to put on your list. Anti-nausea bracelets. I'm someone who gets motion sickness frequently. Um, planes, trains, automobiles, pretty much head spins around. <laughs> It is not pleasant, so I discovered these bracelets on a cruise ship. I usually take gravel to fight motion sickness, but it makes me really sleepy. So motion sickness happens when the fluid in your inner ear gets out of sync with what your eyes are seeing. The confusion to the brain is what makes you feel sick. So this is how you're supposed to wear them. So you put that on and you wear them. It looks them. good too. <laughs> yeah, it's really stylish. You can play tennis too. <laughs> so you want to start at the crease in your wrist three fingers down where the index finger is. That's where the little ball goes. And it should be right between your two tendons. So you can squeeze your fist if you want to find where those are. The way it works is that a stud is sewn into the band, and that puts pressure on an acupressure point, and that tells the brain to release endorphins. And of course, endorphins are natural painkillers. We should really be wearing them all the time. <laughs> you can wear them all the time. You don't just have to put them on when you're starting to feel sick. What I like about these is that they're drug-free, and so pregnant women can use them. People who are undergoing chemotherapy can wear them. Are they perfect? <laughs> they're not they're perfect. They're not perfect. I have been on an extremely bumpy plane ride. I was there. Yes, and it didn't work. Puke on my head. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It's bad. But most of the time, these work like a hot damn. But of course, you can try to avoid motion sickness before it starts by always facing the direction in which you're traveling and breathing fresh air as much as possible. And this is why I always insist on sitting in the front seat of the car. Anti-nausea wristbands are a and approved. Anything that prevents barfing is a and approved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coming up, we finally nail fungus. <laughs> that was nearly in my face. I know. <laughs>you want to hide your summer sandals in the sand. So I want to ask Dr. Dave, why do we get nail fungus? It's a microorganism mm -hmm. and it, it thrives in dark, warm, damp areas. For example, communal baths or showers or pools or if you wear your uncle's shoes. It's contagious, it's highly contagious. You're never borrowing my stilettos again after this. <laughs> now that I know I'm at risk of catching your Fungus. The thing about fungus, it's a very tenacious type of a microorganism. It's the, it's the Bruce Willis of microorganisms. You just can't kill it. Nail polish, though, could that actually protect the nail? In fact, the opposite. Nail polish can actually continue to make the nail conducive to fungal growth. Because remember, dark, warm, and damp. That's what they like. So nail polish just keeps that all confined. And just as, just as shoes can often do the same thing. Yeah. But why is it so hard to kill? Well, any fungus can be hard to kill because it hides underneath places where it's hard to get at, so it's not easily accessible. Okay, how exactly is it hiding? Let me show you. This is our nail. So Your is, nail, this that's is, it. This anyway. is my pancake nail here. Here we have toenail fungus. Okay. What happens is you get a bit of that fungus, and we actually just introduce just a touch of it here. What'll happen with the toenail fungus is it'll continue to spread. You can, if you get it quickly and you trim that off, okay. then you may well be able to, in fact, just remove the problem right away. Keep them clipped. However, if you fail to do that and it mm -hmm. continues to grow, in other words, if it's conducive to its growth or mm -hmm. if you've traumatized the nail, say through inju injury of uh, that comes with running, things like that mm -hmm. that cause little cracks okay. in it then, the next thing you know, you have a real festival of fungus. So I see it's getting through the cracks and then spreading right underneath those Layers of nail. Yeah, it hides underneath that nail plate and makes it difficult to get to the source of the problem. Well, getting to the source of the problem is key. So to find out just how naughty nails can be, I sat down with some folks all too familiar with frustrating feet. Mm. Yeah, it's good though. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what we have to do is take your shoes and socks off, guys. Come on, let's just see those manky feet. Oh. <laughs> Thank goodness this isn't smell of vision. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. The that's the thick nails. Yep. Yeah. But you can put uh, them away now. You oh. can see it. Just how embarrassing is it having tools like that? Some of my family members didn't even know I had it yeah. because I always keep it hidden. So if we're beyond the point where just trimming the nail isn't going to fix it, what can we do? We can add some topical antifungals, and it has to get right to them. 
The topical, even though it says top, you put it on the top, it doesn't actually absorb into the nail. You have to reach under, that's where it's all hiding, Ugh. and you have to get to that. Yes. You've got to lift those gunky nails to apply these cures. This one here, the forces of nature, what did you think? Well, the uh, smell actually I quite liked, you know, of all of them. But one thing I didn't like was it didn't have the brush. Mm -hmm. So I just ripped it on and let it soak. Uh, Zeta, this one here, I found it just went on a little nicer. It was sort of a little evener spread, I found. Mm -hmm. It was the first one I tried. I was like, this is the best. It just went on so easily and dried fairly quickly. <laughs> this one was my feet down favorite. I've noticed that all of these have got tea tree oil in them. So why can't I just put tea tree oil right onto my nail? Tea tree is, is a powerful natural antifungal. But if you can combine it with some other agents that help it penetrate that very difficult to get to area, you'll have a much more effective treatment. So these products contain mild acid, which helps the tea tree get at the fungus. Can you take something orally to treat this? You can. There are oral preparations, oral antifungals, but they can be very hard on your liver. So we always test your liver first before we give it to you. It's a whiskey that you're taking. Yeah, <laughs> you can't, can't combine it with your normal breakfast uh, cocktail. But it, it's also, they're expensive, and you have to take them for a long period of time. It's not worth it. Yeah. For the side effects, I'd rather have a healthy liver and bad nails. I know. Exactly. So just run me through those main steps to avoid getting nail fungus. Well, avoid a fungus-friendly environment to start with. So so don't wear your uncle's bowling shoes to the swimming pool. And if you do, wear sandals in the shower. And, and trim your toenails so if you see it starting, you can catch it early before it becomes too late. So it's not a case of out of sight, out of mind. Those yellow, brittle toenails will be lurking beneath. So the next time uh, you feel a fun guy hanging around. Fun guy? Fun guy. Yeah, you'd nail it early is what you want to do. <laughs> and before it gets too clingy, we'll never get rid of it. You know what? Speaking of getting rid of it here. Think about every, it. Everybody, I'm going, I'm everybody wants no, me to bye, do this. Bye. I know they do. I'm coming. <laughs> Don't go far. <laughs> Biologic doesn't stop here. Check us out online. Of course, when it comes to your body, always check with your healthcare pro. I am actually a pair. Yeah. That is my bum. <laughs> and also, what's nice is you've got the headrest and it's adjustable. Should you want to be like that? You never been wasted? This is your first <laughs> time being wasted? Thing. Okay. You look like you have been wasted many times. Just keep up. <laughs> that was nearly on my face. I know. That's what I was trying to do. You knew that was going to happen sometime. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get a handful here. Here, come on.